what's good everybody and welcome back to pointing you to jesus if it is your first time here welcome welcome to the channel where we aim to just point you to jesus wait what is my intro welcome to pointing you to jesus the channel whoa ha <clears throat> reminder for you guys as we have just started this new year by the way happy new year wow <laughs> What's good everybody and welcome back to pointing you to jesus if it is your first time here my name is tado and welcome welcome to the channel where we just want to point you back to jesus regardless of whatever direction it is that your life is taking because we know and we believe that god is able to meet you right there where you are and in turn you can also point your world back to jesus let's get into this video so today i'm coming to you with just a reminder that you cannot choose you cannot pick what version of God you acknowledge and what version of God you want to serve. The Bible clearly says throughout the Bible, we are told of the character of God. Throughout the Bible, we are told that God is loving, God is faithful, God is good, God is amazing. He's a God of mercy and he's full of grace. You know, he's an amazing father. He's the best to ever do it. You know, he sent his one and only son into this world to come and die for us. You know, he was sinless. He knew no sin, none whatsoever, like none, zero. And he died for you and I so that we could have the chance to, we could have the chance to serve this amazing and beautiful God. But it also says throughout scripture that God is a God of righteousness. He is righteousness himself. He is a just God. He's a vengeful God. He's a jealous God. You know, these these two versions of God, should I say, you know, this beautiful, this loving father, this amazing God who is close to the brokenhearted, who is amazing and who is just always there, you know, he's also the same God who requires obedience from you and I. He's also the same God who is righteous you know he is righteousness himself and unfortunately especially now we have grown so comfortable with serving just this one version of god we have grown so comfortable with just choosing this one version of god that we choose to acknowledge yes god is loving he's beautiful he's full of grace and full of mercy and he's a god of many many chances but he's still a holy god he is still a holy god you know, he's the same God. Yes, he's the same God who parted the Red Sea for the Israelites to pass through. He's the same God. He's the same God who rose um, Gideon into battle to, to set him into battle with just 300 soldiers. He's the same God. He's the same God who instructs. He's also the same God who made sure that Moses wouldn't go into the promised land because of his disobedience. You know, he's also the same God. He's also the very, very same God who made sure that only Caleb and Joshua would cross over into the promised land because of their faith. He's, you know, the Old Testament God, you know, the Old Testament, the, the Old Testament God, the God that we read throughout scripture in the Old Testament, that he required absolute holiness. He required everything to be precise. He required everything to be like straight to the point, like if you get a measurement wrong, it's over for you. He's also still the same God of the New Testament. He's also, you know, Old Testament God, New Testament God, still the same God that we serve today. And unfortunately we've grown so, so comfortable, so, so comfortable with just overlooking all the parts of God that require us to die to ourselves. We've grown so comfortable in just choosing flesh over God. We've grown so, so comfortable in the fact that we're like, no, he's a God of mercy. You know, the mercies of God always come in the morning. You know, grace is always there. You know, he's a loving God. He's a God of second chances. Yes, he is. But he's also a God that requires us to be obedient. He's also a God that requires us to live to his will. He's also a God that requires us to submit to his authority. That is the same God that we serve the same same God same same no difference no no difference Hosea chapter 6 verse 3 says 
Oh, that we might know the Lord. Let us press on to know him. He will respond to us as surely as the arrival of dawn or the coming of rains in early spring. This verse says, let us press on to know him, to know him as he is, not the parts of him that we choose to acknowledge, not the parts of him that are convenient to us, the parts that do not inconvenience us. Throughout scripture, we are told that we are required to live a holy life. The Bible says that God says to us that we should be holy as he is holy, as he is holy. Knowing God is knowing who he is, who he chooses to reveal himself to you as, not who you choose to acknowledge God to be. No. When you know Jesus, when, when we accept Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, you know, the, the salvation prayer says, I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. The Savior part says, Jesus, you came down to earth, you died for me, and you rose again in victory. Um, affording me the chance to live a fruitful life, affording me the chance to live a holy life, you know, to be reconciled with my Father. The Lord part says, you have the authority. I recognize the authority that you have and therefore I submit to the authority that you have. We, can, we cannot be so comfortable in this lukewarm gospel. We cannot be so, so comfortable. You know, my prayer is that this year we may know God for who he is, that we may know God for who he is, who he chooses to reveal himself to us as. And especially in these trying times where literally, there is literally always something happening. Oh my God. There is always something happening. And my greatest prayer for all of us is to run after God to know him for who he is you know the the danger of of choosing to just acknowledge the parts of God is that the danger of just choosing to focus on this one part of God is that you you never actually know who God is you you are robbing yourself of the chance to know intimately this father that our heart and soul and spirit seeks you are robbing yourself of the opportunity to live a fruitful, a fruitful life that is solely, solely aimed at giving glory to God. You are robbing yourself of that chance. Oh, how beautiful the presence of God is. Oh, how beautiful the presence of God is. When Jesus asked the disciples, who does the world say he is? You know, they said, they say you're the prophet. They say you're the you. They say you're Jeremiah. You, they say that you are this. They say you're that. But then he asked them, "Who do you say I am?" And Peter said, "You are the Messiah, the Son of God." And on that revelation, on that revelation, the church was built. That is what Jesus said. On that revelation, on the revelation that I am the Messiah, on the revelation that I am the Son of God, the church will be built on that revelation. When you get a revelation of who God is only then will you be able to stand firm only then will you know truly and intimately who the father is when you finally get the revelation of who God is only then will you be able to influence the world how do you expect to influence the world how do you expect to make a change in this dying world when you have blended in with the very world that you you want to influence how is that even possible we have grown so so comfortable in our in, in mediocrity we've grown so comfortable in hearing in hearing popularity gospels we have grown so comfortable we we've grown so so comfortable the danger is comfortability the danger is choosing to choose self over god every day when you choose to just focus you know when you choose to just overlook the parts of god that inconvenience you when you choose to focus on the parts of god that only convenient that are only convenient to you you are robbing yourself. You are robbing yourself and you are choosing to stay ignorant. And that is the danger. You are choosing to stay in comfortable ignorance. And that right there is dangerous. Hebrews 10 verse 26 says, Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we have received knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. You know. You know that God is a God that requires obedience from us. You know that he is a righteous God. You know that he is a jealous God, but yet you choose 
intentionally so, you choose to still sin. You know, the Bible says in Romans, it says that it is his goodness that leads us to repentance. It is his goodness that leads us to repentance. When you finally experience the love of God and come to know the knowledge of truth, when you finally come to understand um, the truth of Jesus Christ, you know, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and you, your eyes are opened, your eyes are opened to all that there is in the world, you know, the good and the bad, and yet you still choose your flesh over God every day, then there's no more sacrifice for you. The perfect sacrifice was when Jesus came down to earth, he died and he rose again. That was the perfect sacrifice. That was it. There's no more sacrifice. That is where it ends. That is the sacrifice. That is the only sacrifice that could ever satisfy God. That is the only sacrifice. And when you know this sacrifice, when you know the gospel of God, and yet you still choose your flesh, you still choose to sin, you still choose to overlook obedience, you still choose to overlook the fact that every day you should die to self, then there's no more sacrifice for you. Pella, now you're doing your own thing. I get, you already know the truth, but yet you still choose to stay in your sin. Then that is a whole different thing. My prayer is that you would know God, that you would know God and choose him every day you choose him every day decide to choose god every day decide to know god for who he says he is not who someone else says not who someone someone's experience of god is not who you chose to be convenient for you God is not a pizza that you can just pick and choose which kind of God that you, which version, oh, which version of God today must I serve? You know, the good God, the faithful God, the merciful God, the graceful God. No, choose every day, choose to serve God for who he is. He requires obedience from you. Jesus said that if we love him, if we love him, we will obey. Love equals obedience. That is it. That is just how it is. And even David said that you do not require a sacrifice or burnt offerings. You do not require of that. But instead, you require you. the only sacrifice that you want from us is a broken spirit, is a repentant spirit. Hosea 6 verse 6 says, I want you to show love, not offer sacrifices. I want you to know me more than I want burnt offerings. More than I want burnt offerings you know if you repent of all of your sin if you repent of of the the conviction you know the holy spirit convicts all the time he convicts all the time it's just us that we choose to focus on doing things that will grieve him the the things that will further muffle his voice you know make everything else louder you know amplify other voices except the voice of the holy spirit except the holy spirit he convicts us every day because not because he wants to condemn, not because he, he wants us to feel less of ourselves or anything like that. But he does it out of love because every day is a day that we every day is a day that we become more and more like Jesus Christ. You know, every, sanctification is an everyday thing. God wants you to know him for who he is. God wants you to wake up from your sleep, child of God. He wants you to wake up from your sleep and influence this world that he has put you in. He The world is broken. The world is hurting. And it longs to see the children of God living for God. How do you expect to, to influence the world if you yourself, you have blended in with the world? How do you expect... How do you expect to, to influence this world and point this world to Jesus if you yourself have submitted to the culture instead of submitting to the authority of Jesus, instead of submitting to the will of God? How do you expect to do that? The world longs to see the children of God living convicted lives. The world longs to see you do, representing God. The world longs to see that it is better to serve God than to live in the world, than to stay in my sin. The world needs to see that. 
Wake up from your sleep, child of God. Wake up. Get out of your ignorance. Choose today to stand up and get out of your ignorance and know God for who he is. Know God. Know God. You know, the thing is, he also, he also wants you to know him. He wants to reveal himself to you. He wants that. The question is, do you want that as well? The question is, will you still continue to choose flesh over God? The very same flesh that only just takes and takes and takes and takes and never gives back. The very same flesh that will literally at the last minute drop you literally who do you choose today do you still choose to pick a side of god that you want to serve do you still choose to only have this um paint this picture perfect god that only you want to serve that is very convenient to you or will you let god in completely you know completely the god that requires your obedience the god that requires you to die to flesh every day the god that requires you to live absolutely for him absolutely and literally for him who do you choose today who do you choose that is the only question really who do you choose i hope you make the right choice his goodness leads us to repentance it's it's just that sometimes we just choose to stay in our ignorance. We just choose flesh over God. And it's very sad. So, yeah. So with that being said, thank you so, so much for joining me today. And I hope that you do like, comment, and subscribe and become a part of this wonderful family. And of course, share this video with your world. I love you guys so, so much. And I'll see you in my next video.